IELTS Academic Task 1. Which tense, which tense are we going to use for to score maximum points? Hello there, my name is Ben Worthington from IELTSpodcast.com and sentenceguide.com. Sentenceguide.com is an online course offering guarantees, offering IELTS essay corrections as well, and lots of motivation and feedback to push you to improve. So you might want to check that out when you've got a minute. Now, this tutorial is going to be very brief, very quick, just the essentials, and we're going to look at what tends to use in the academic task one writing section. Now, just before I go into this, we'll look, I'll tell you a funny story about one of my classrooms. It's only about 20 seconds. Um, but first, let's just have a look at the golden rules. Okay, so the rules, quite straightforward and quite obvious, but you would be surprised. So if the year of the, of the graph of the illustration in front of you, it's probably a graph, not an illustration or a diagram, perhaps. Um, if it's before the present year, the present year that you're doing your exam, the year, if it's before then, you're going to use the past. If it's after, you're going to use the future tense. And if there's no year, you can just use the present simple tense. In general, don't change the tenses halfway through the sentence. There are some certain some cases where you can and where it's necessary but the majority of the cases you'll probably find it's not necessary okay so the funny story about the uh, about when i was teaching i asked a student what the past tense was of think and it's quite a funny answer i'll tell you in a second i'll tell you at the end of the video so Let's have a look. Pause the video if you want to review your grammatical knowledge of the past tenses. There's um, a list there which you can just quickly review to refresh. And let's jump into using the past tense. So here we can see the entire chart is obviously in the past. So here we're going to, um, going to use the simple past. Okay. And look, we've got it here. Um, it can be noted. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, no. There, it's here. The significant rise occurred between 1920 and 1930, and the average person increased their intake by 13 pounds. Okay, so here, by the way, noting or uh, paying attention to the biggest jump or the most significant change is a good tactic to use, okay? And we probably might want to include the smallest change, which might be here or here as well. And these kind of tips, there's m not millions, but there's a few very essential ones that you can use to increase your score significantly. In the IELTS academic online course at sentenceguide.com, I'll go into more detail. So here, quick example of the past tense. Here, the future tense, it can be seen from the chart that by 2020, this is a useful preposition, the population owning mobile, mobile phones will exceed, okay, will exceed, will surpass, will overtake the number with electricity by 1%, okay. It is also predicted that more people will have more will have running water at forty five percent than a landline at twenty eight percent. So the whole graph is set in twenty twenty. It's a prediction. We're going to use the future tense will, and also hopefully you'll have spotted that there's this construction the passive. It can be seen, and we also used it here. It can be noted, and the reason why we're using this is because. Um, we're going to use a wide range of grammatical structures and this one is very useful for your academic task one. Okay, we don't want to use it in every single sentence, obviously, um, but it, it is very useful and we can, here's another tip, we can use the passive but with some future verbs like 
um, it is predicted, okay, or yeah, it is predicted that, and then we've got a different structure or a different expression to express the future. So that's very useful. We can use a, a wide range. Also, here's another tip. It's just popped into my mind now. Um, use will. Try to avoid going to. Going to is a tense that's more common in spoken English. Okay, so um, will is the standard tense there. And also, if you can mix it with the future verbs, it is predicted, it is forecasted, it is expected. Okay, the smart students would have written those examples down. Let's carry on. Present simple tense. So, I said before, we can use this when there's no date. There is no, there is a date here. However, the whole graph is 207, uh, 2007. And it would be a little bit clumsy and unnecessary here to just put everything in the past because there isn't really kind of like a change. So here, look, we can use this passive structure, which is very useful. Uh, I hope you've noticed we've used this passive structure in every example sentence. So it's probably a good sentence structure to master and to incorporate into your next IELTS task one writing task. So let's see, you can see from the chat that there are currently more overweight Americans than Irish. Good. So here that there are, we're writing in, this, in the present. In fact, there are almost 30% more overweight US citizens. The fattest group in the Anglosphere are the Kiwis, with 68.4% of the population presently considered weighing more than recommended, or weighing more than what is recommended. Now, a few students might be saying that we could um, also use the past. I think perhaps it wouldn't be terrible to use the past, but I wanted to use the present here because if we look at the title, prevalence of overweight people in the Anglosphere, it's in the present. So let's follow the example or follow the title given here in the diagram and just continue using that tense. Now, as I said before, there are some cases where we might want to be using both. Okay, and here we're just going to follow the example of the essay, uh, sorry, of the diagram, because the diagram starts in 1990 and finishes in 2040. So actually, although it might seem difficult to have this type of graph, uh, to describe this type of graph, it's actually going to be quite useful for you because you get to the opportunity to express uh, or to use three different tenses, the past, the present and the future, and that will help your score significantly. So in, in this type of chat, we have no option but to use all three types, okay? Past, present and future. And also we're going to use the same, uh, sorry, the it is, it can be seen because it's very useful. Now then, the answer to my, what my students said when I said, okay, do you know the past uh, tense, uh, the past tense of think? And the student said, well, I thought about it. I thought, I thought, and I thought, and finally, I think the answer is thunk. <laughs> okay, it's uh, just a joke there. <laughs> um, anyway, so what I wanted to say was thank you for watching. And if you've got any questions about these graphs, about IELTS and anything like that, you can go to IELTSpodcast.com, sign up to the email list and get lots of IELTS materials for free. And you can also check out sentenceguide.com where there's, um, you can purchase the online course at sentenceguide.com. So, and there we've got lots more tips and videos and you can get all the support and motivation you need and you deserve to pass the IELTS exam. Okay, good luck in the exam and all the best.